Senator Graham, welcome. Uh, thank you, General. I would agree that, that we're, we're finally getting this right, but I hope you don't ignore the fact that it, we had to pull teeth to get here. You know, one reason we hadn't prosecuted anybody is we had some pretty really weird theories that the courts kept knocking down. And now we're back to a more traditional way of doing business. And I want to applaud the fact that we do have dedicated men and women who are serving their country well as prosecutors, defense attorneys, and, and military jurors. But I'm not going to sit here and just ignore three and a half years of trying to sell things that nobody would buy. Well, now we've about got it right. And I'm willing to make it better if we can. Uh, bottom line for me is that the big distinction between us and anyone else in the world, uh, Mr. Engel, is that we consider the people we're fighting enemy combatants, not common criminals. Is that correct? I think that's right. I don't think there's another jurisdiction in the world that takes al-Qaeda suspects and tries them under the theory of the law of armed conflict. We do. The reason we do is because of September 11, 2001. This country has to reconcile itself as to how we want to proceed. Did the people who attack us, were they a group of common criminals, afforded due process of law under domestic criminal law? If that's the case, nothing we do at Guantanamo Bay can move forward. You're right, Senator Durbin. That is not my theory. My theory is that we've been in an undeclared state of war with ununiform combatants who wish to kill us all if they could. And when we capture one of them, we have the obligation of a great nation to follow the law of armed conflict, which is very robust, has a rich history, which I have played a small role in, insignificant as it may be, I am proud of it. And we've tried to bastardize that, and we've tried to change it, and we've tried to cut corners, and we paid a price. Now, as I understand military law, that once you capture somebody and their status is to be determined, that is a military decision, not a federal judge's decision under the Geneva Convention. Is that correct, General Hartman? Either uh, one of you. I think that's exactly right. Under sir. Article 5 of the Geneva Convention, it requires if there's a question of status, whether or not you're an unlawful enemy combatant, a traditional prisoner of war, or an innocent civilian, a competent tribunal will be in panel to make that decision. Is that not what the Geneva Convention says? Oh, that's exactly right. Now... Based on that, we have taken Article 19, uh, Regulation 190-1, I believe it is, the Army Regulation. A dash 8. Dash 8, and we've enhanced it. Now, the question for people like me is, should you provide military lawyers at the Combat Status Review Tribunal? Something I wanted to do three years ago. I wish I had done it now, because the reason I wish I had done it is even though it's unprecedented, in traditional wars, we assumed the war would be over when the powers met and declared an end to it. Do either one of you believe there will be a surrender ceremony in your lifetime regarding the war in terror? I'm unable to answer that. Yeah. I will answer it for you. No. Never in my lifetime will some politician declare this war over and let everybody at Guantanamo Bay go. That's not going to happen. So what we need, I think, gentlemen, is an understanding we're at war, but it's a different kind of war. And to General uh, Senator Sessions' comments, how did we let these people go? Well, what we have at Guantanamo Bay is an initial decision-making process by the military. You're an enemy combatant, unlawful enemy combatant. And every year, Senator, we look at the case anew. We look for three things. Is there any new evidence to change your status? Do you still have intelligence value that would be useful to the war? And third, are you a threat? And a board of officers meets every year, and you can have new input from the detainee's point of view along those three lines. And we have let over 400 people go using that annual review board process. Unfortunately, you're right, Senator Sessions, 30 have gone back to the fight. We are at war. 30 have been caught, and who knows what the others are doing. But having said that, Senator Session, I think it is incumbent upon us to have a hybrid process because if we don't, the initial decision is a de facto life sentence. And I am proud of this process. And when it comes to your side, General Hartman, if there is an allegation that the evidence in question is tainted because it's a result of torture, 
it is my understanding the military judge must exclude any evidence that violates the torture statute. Is that correct? Any statement obtained through torture is inadmissible. And as to an allegation of coercion, which our enemy is trained to allege, al-Qaeda operatives are trained into the American legal system. They know exactly what to say. It's my understanding at Guantanamo Bay, the military judge will have a hearing regarding the allegation of coercion and will decide whether or not the evidence is reliable and should go to the finder of fact. Is that correct? Reliable, probative, and in the best interest of justice. And that judicial decision by that judge can be appealed to civilian courts. That's correct. That it can be appealed to the civilian courts after going through the military process. It is my understanding that every detainee at Guantanamo Bay, Senator Durbin, will have their day in federal court. That every decision by the military will be reviewed by the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, and that is ongoing right now. The difference I have with you, my friend, is I don't want to turn over to the federal judges in this country the ability to determine the enemy force in the first instance because they're not trained to do so. That is a military decision, but I do not mind any judge in this, any appellate court in this land looking over the shoulder of these gentlemen here to make sure they did it right. I think that is the sweet spot for this country. Now, when it comes to whether or not there's political influence on these trials, Senator Feinstein, I want to get to the bottom of this. Now, I know Mo Davis, and I know you. I've been an Air Force JAG for 25 years. I respect you both, and I want to find out the best I can what's going on down there. But I would like to just tell my good friend, Senator Durbin, if we close Guantanamo Bay, and maybe we should, where do we send them, and what do we do with them? And the only thing I ask to my colleagues is that as we try to correct the process and improve it, and I think there's ways that we can go forward to make it better, please don't lose sight that the people that we're dealing with, the truly guilty, are warriors, not domestic common criminals. And those who've been caught up in this net of trying to find out who the enemy is, some of them are probably either on the fringes or just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And that's been the nature of war as long as man has been engaged in war. What I'm looking for is not the outlier case where they went back to killing Americans, because if you do that, nobody ever gets released. Or the idea that they're all victims and just at the wrong place at the wrong time. All we can hope to find as a nation is a process that will be flawed, but still adheres to our values. And I think we're very close to that process being... Uh, being correct in terms of us being at war. Now, one of the issues facing this country is waterboarding. General Hartman, do you believe waterboarding violates the Geneva Convention? Uh, I was asked that earlier, Senator, and with regard to this entire issue, uh, we start with the following premise. Torture is illegal in the United States. We have a downed airman in Iran. We get a report that the Iranian government is involved in the exercise of waterboarding that downed airman on the theory they want to know when the next military operation may occur. What would be the response of, uh, what should be the response of uniform legal community regarding the activity of the Iranian government? I, I'm not equipped to answer that question, Senator. You are. I will tell you the answer to the question that you asked in the beginning, Senator. And that you mean you're not equipped to, to give a legal opinion as to whether or not Iranian military waterboarding, secret security agents waterboarding down airmen is a violation of the Geneva Convention? I, I am not prepared to answer that question, Senator. Thank you. I, I, am no, I have no further question. Thank you very much, Senator. Um,